the um, in the gallery yesterday we had an artist named um, Sean Sobers from England who's also uh, an educator works a lot with youth media and in the video that he made he talked about how as an educator um, telling his personal story and having his young people tell their personal stories is a really key part of how he works and I wonder if you could talk about the sort of autobiographical nature of your piece in relationship to your thinking about education and in relationship to working with kids. Um, sure, thanks, Alex. Um, you know, I didn't want to. This, the end of the, you know, the the end of this particular school year was a, a space, a school I'd been working working at for 12 years. I'd worked with Pato there for three on uh, engaging the community a lot in. Um, Arts-related projects. Although I was a math coach, I coached the teachers, and, and uh, you know, and then when this kind of displacement—it's just a weird technical thing—I was displaced, and uh, was not really anticipating the kind of, you know, this kind of support. All this, you know, parents were like, "No, you can't," leave, you know, and I was like, you know, I was ready to kind of go move on and, and do some things, uh, and so it had a very unexpected experience, uh, unexpected uh, feelings for me, and I, and I really felt like I just, as I continued to kind of teach and go on and, and try to find some kind of, uh, uh, you know, again, experiences for kids, I mean, that's where our brain is very active, and, you know, in our, mid, our midbrain, the, you know, the limbic system and a lot of that activates a lot of our uh, learning or inhibits it, and uh, so I think that I, I can't divorce myself from that experience uh, in terms of what I do and uh, I certainly wouldn't would want to encourage that with uh, with kids or adults as well you know so. um, well sure I mean I feel like that the that out of the catharsis of creating an artistic project coming so soon after the displacement and being gr being in LA and, and working with these students and, and naturally being drawn to people who are still at Placencia and working with people there, it, it kind of, the, the project itself, being with my father and working on it, it kind of, it was, it was almost, it, it, we just went where the camera felt like the story was, where the story was and where he was on this, on this journey and what's coming next and through language finding more of an it wasn't like we planned out all those words that he all those headlines that he put down there I, it was a subliminal thing that so many of them had these uh, other in, like uh, connotations of you know feeling the void or displacement or whatever you know so and it was really it was like whoa well, this is this is what we're ma this is the story right here this is where we're going yeah, you know I had cut those words yeah, yeah I had cut out the words a few weeks ago just for school you know because I, I try to use a lot of different stuff and and then it was like oh well let's use them in this thing and just I mean even just right there in front of the school I was just like pulling things out of the stack that I had in my hand and it uh, uh, it really aligned very well but for me it also raises your comments how important creativity is in teaching and learning and producing the possibilities for ourselves as educators and for our students to be in that place, you know, it's this other way of learning, which we found watching the young people respond to the things that you had, um, the headlines you had clipped, but also you responding. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> this guy, I mean, having your, working on something with your child is, is a really great thing. <laughs> we actually have a number of familial pairings in our show because one of the things the show is thinking about is community and the various kinds of communities that um, we engage with in live spaces and the kinds of communities we engage with through the internet. So Kira Ennis and her husband participated, Pato Hebert and his sister participated, and you're the third family grouping. I'm wondering if anyone from the floor would like to ask a question to the artist or make a comment about the video that you just saw. Tessa. Thanks for coming out to Pitzer. Um, so the, were the students in the film your former students or community members that you interact with and how do they become part of the film? Uh, well, the, the, uh, the three younger, uh, younger ones were uh, former students at Placencia 
and uh, and then the uh, older gentleman, Tawan, he was actually a buddy of Flannery's that we've known for a long time, and yeah. well, and he was here. Mm -hmm. There was uh, in term. Uh, there's, there's the, the community of Placencia students and stuff like that, but also my friend Tawan, I thought he'd be a good perspective because he's an artist and a rapper and, uh, and an artist in his own right, but he, uh, he, he'd gotten into some trouble and he has just got out of prison for a year. So it was a whole other side of his, his idea of what these words and what drew, what, what, what feelings responded to him as he was. So it was just like we were in there with the, doing some music things and it was like, well, why don't you just be part of the video and we can talk about it. And he, uh, you know, and this thing about the twilight of the glaciers that he was, that he was going on about, even though it was not, even though he, he wasn't talking about that it, you know, the, the glaciers you know, melt, melting, that it was this twilight period in this being isolated, being in this glacial kind of place I think he responded to. So it was really interesting to see how the connections that he made as compared to the connections that, you know, like what's a, what's a bell or what's, what is an apple big as company or whatever, you know. So it was interesting to have that, 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 that difference along with my father's, you know, kind of thing. One of the things, uh, the show has 32 artists and they're very eclectic. So everything from, you know, like the fans, fancy pants artists who shows in the biggest, you know, gallery to um, a group of women that we had who are in a transitional program from prison into the um, community and every kind of uh, people in our community across the spectrum. And one of the things that's been so interesting is that there have been these kind of random or uh, lucky or fortuitous connections that we never anticipated. And there have been a number of works or people in our film I'm sorry, people in our show who've been thinking about prison and the post-incarceration experience. So we actually have, now that you know, tell this about your character, four pieces in the show that are um, about thinking about prison and, and, and the experience of someone post-incarceration. And that lucky hitting up against, things hitting up against each other, that is definitive of YouTube. Except for we are interested in repurposing it, which is to say, drawing those connections closer and making them more fertile for us. So I'm wondering if you could think about that in relationship to the way that you made that piece, again, out of these sort of lucky coincidences of things that sort of build up to a more um, purposeful conversation. Um, you know, it, it is the, the kind of multiplicity of voices and, and that, uh, that YouTube and some of the other video uh, I mean, from MySpace and all these things, uh, it's it's really fascinating because of the public nature. We I, we had actually at my school a few years back, and I, it's a program I wish was still going. A program called WebPlay, where uh, our you know kids took used technology uh, to communicate with a, a partner class in London. Kids in, in Echo Park, and they had a partner class in London, and they used this uh, format and and uh, communicated mostly by writing, uh, texting, and, uh, but then, but ultimately they created a play. The kids in LA set their play, had to set their play in uh, London, and the kids in London had to set their play in LA. So they had to use this interaction to learn about each other and, and then take it and, and make something creative out of it. And uh, it does seem to have this, this progression where there is greater and greater opportunities to uh, see the breadth of, of people's experiences and that kind of has a, has a very underlying uh, you know in teaching you know there, there is that fight it's that dual thing everybody needs to be doing this everybody needs to be on this page everybody needs to be doing this uh, you know uh, know know this by this time and and teachers need to be doing this at this time of the day or you know there's that but uh, the nature of creating uh, a, an experience for children where the outcome is not known and is, is very uh, anxiety provoking in, in teachers or, and, you know, or in, you know, in any, uh, I think in any kind of situation where you need to have a product. And uh, so I think that embracing and finding the real nature of uh, the advantages of creating, uh, you know, a multiplicity of voices um, is, is a really wonderful thing to work with, you know, not against, certainly not the only uh, uh, means, but certainly I, I see it as being very valuable.
a very organic, I think increasingly, increasingly organic, ironically, it's very technical and very, but there's a very, you know, so. You too. Well, I mean, the, the, the clip uh, of the teachers is from a Telemundo, uh, is from Telemundo, but then put onto YouTube, and then we took that from YouTube and put that into the video. And also, I mean, it's just we're taking these ideas and these places and putting them in a different setting altogether and getting a deeper understanding by removing them from the context. And like the, up in the arts district, by walking around the arts district, we run into two, of those, uh, two members of the Master Chorale who had worked with my father at Placencia. And we're like, what are you, what's coming next? What are we going to do without you at Placencia? You know? mm -hmm. And so they're putting all these, all the juxtapositions juxtapositions of these, you know, media settings and, and, and uh, you know, into, in, into whole other places that, that give you, that, that make connections that you would never, you, that wouldn't otherwise be known and that can, you know, cause some reflection and deeper understanding within me and, and within my father and stuff like that and within the students and whoever's participating. I think we're going to wrap up because we only shoot for 10 minutes, but now we move to the coffee and cookies and, and pe we can speak informally, but I did want to just say the shots of the headlines against the landscape that you guys were working with were just so eloquent and beautiful in relationship to the idea of repurposing media in social spaces. I just, you know, the, I'm really gonna think about them a lot um, and then hearing the voices behind that were Re repurposing again or p producing another context. So thank you so much for your work and um, everybody thank you for coming.